Uh, so, how are you guys doing? Hey, what's what up? Good, pretty good. Pretty Shalom. Good. Shalom, awesome. everybody. It is, it is the day of Sh- Trump. Sh- Shana Tova. It's the new year for Everyone us, Hebrews. Year. Like, how can I not be amazing? I just realized that those decorations in the corner, uh, Rico, in the back. Right. I didn't realize yeah. this is Shana Tova. Oh, yeah. Shana Tova. It's a, it's a nice have, touch. Uh, we have... Uh, and then we have Shabbat Shalom and Rosh Hashanah, all like kind of descending down from the Shabbat Shalom. It was fun. Actually, if you look at the rest of my, my apartment, there's like decorations everywhere. We made a whole thing. I feel, like, That's cool. I, I feel yeah. like those are the cons, those are the, like the repercussions of getting a wife. Good for you, my man. I call them those benefits, okay. but I'll take benefits, that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the repercussions. Spot, spot, spot. <laughs> benefits. The I know, it's women, fine. And it, like, it didn't come to mind, so I didn't <laughs> use the next in mind, so I hope you. Yeah, I filled the blank. So I'll go. Well, let's be honest. I, I, as a man or as men, we don't really care about a decoration. Like, we're That's in a building and I mean, has a couch. Yeah, like I would have been just well, as happy. The, the, you're the one like, man. A box with food on it. That's it. Like, That's I would have just fine with just upturned box and food on it. It would have been just the same to me. But this is this is pretty good too. I like this. this is nice. <laughs> it's the woman's touch. A woman's touch. There you exactly. go. Woman's touch. Never. Never. Uh, what was it? Repercussion. <laughs> repercussions. I'm just. I mean, I'm tell that. It's okay because repercussion just means it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's something that comes to because of something else, right? It's True, but it's, it usually it usually has a negative connotation. Yeah. But I'm gonna yeah. use that next time I talk to her. Well, anyway, so. You're the repercussions <laughs> of my life, <laughs> of my life decisions. I'm gonna call my I'm gonna call my first son the repercussions of um, of my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But anyway, so we were gonna talk about two house, like I said the last week. But yeah. then I thought, you know, it's Yam Terua, so it'd be more appropriate to talk about Yam Terua, why it's important so, and you know, what does it mean to us today? Mm-hmm. Uh so you know, we have all you guys here to you know give your opinions, uh and also bring what you know to the table. Uh so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Because uh, uh, the big thing, like for Christians, you know, when you talk to them and you t- mention like Yom Tura or Yom Kippur, uh, they look a lot at like the sacrifices and things like that. And the first thing they're going to tell you is like, you know, why do I need to keep those things if, you know, yeah. Jesus no, died for everything? Jesus. Yeah. yeah, if Jesus died, you know, why do I have to keep these things? Because it's unnecessary, right? And if you think about it, it's kind of, it, it makes sense that they come to that conclusion because that's what they were taught. But, you know, they just have to, you know, uh, unlearn the things that they were taught about, you know, sacrifices and right. things like that. Uh, which I think we will explain uh, once we get to the second part of the two houses. Because the one common misconception is that Yeshua died, uh, you know, as a sin sacrifice. Uh, and people try to relate it to the sacrifices in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, there is no sacrifices that just, you know, takes away your sin. Uh, yeah. for, it's a sacrifice uh, for, for, for willing sin. For willing sin, that. yes. For willing for, sin. For willing rebellious sin. There, there, there was a sacrifice. For yeah, there's nothing there. So, yeah. Yeshua doesn't really replace anything because there's nothing there. That's why he had to come in the first place. Uh, sorry, one second. But, uh, what was going to say? Lost my train of thought. Oh, no, we lost him. <laughs> oh, wait, well, that, that's one of the uh, things that, uh, you know, the Yeshua, when he came, it, it wasn't for that. So him dying on the cross, dying for our sins, it wasn't uh, to get rid of or substitute Yom Kippur and all those other feasts. So right now, you know, Yom Teruah is about the past, and the purpose of Yom Teruah is to you know to call people to repentance and to prepare them for the for Yom Kippur, which is also a very big deal, you know. Exactly. It, it, it's it's funny how all the major fall feasts happen. Very close to each other. It's 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 like a domino effect. Kind of one leads into the next, and so you have um, you have Yitzhua, which leads into you know, Yom Kippur and all that self reflection and everything, and all the repentance, which leads then into Tabernacles and everybody. And that, that's like your catharsis. Everyone gets to be together and worship the Lord and have like and have a have a relatively m- much more enjoyable time. And then it leads right right back into in the rest of the year. So. <clears throat> exactly. It's it's a nice pattern to see. But, um, I mean, for a lot of people, I mean, they don't see the reason why we should still keep it. I mean, I even see in the Hebrew roots that they don't think it's that necessary because, again, you know, you should die for our sins. But I know your father talks about, you know, collective sin versus, like, the individual sin. 
And the purpose of Yom Kippur is that, you know, it's for us as a people, like Israel, to, you know, be for, uh, have our sins forgiven collectively. Because until that happens, you know, we're always going to be perpetually, uh, I guess, unholy or unclean. I don't know which is the yeah, right we'll, term. We'll all be, um, it's, it's the difference between moral and ritual impurity, and you have uh, personal, communal, and national sin and sacrifice. <clears throat> so the, the purpose of Yom Kippur was to have a national, just for everyone nationally to be absolved of their sins, right? For the sins of Israel to be absolved. Exactly. And so, um, and because we're always living in ritual impurity, especially out in the world, but it's important to always live in moral purity, which is definitely the more the more, the more important. Yeah. So that that's what you know. That's why Yom Kippur is important, especially now today. Uh, it's yeah. a lot about the community. It's not just about the individual, you know. And it puts it into perspective, you know, how we all are accountable for each other. And we see that a lot in the Old Testament. Like, there's that one part in one of the Torah portions where somebody goes and he takes gold for himself. And because of that, the whole um, camp is put under, you know, punishment because of him. And a lot of people look at that and they're like, you know, well, that's not fair, you know. Why does his sin affect everybody else? And in reality, if you think about it, it, it does, you know, today it's somebody's sin can affect the whole community. You know, I don't want to go to one extreme, but like, you know, in a family, uh, in a family, when one person commits a crime and it could either be a, a very terrible crime or something mm -hmm. minor, but it affects the whole family because that is always going to put their name to shame. It's like, oh, you're related to that guy that committed that yeah. crime. And that's the same thing that happens when somebody commits sin. You know, you not only uh, affect yourself, but everybody's going to look at you as the face of that community. It's, it, it really plays into the into the into what Israel was always meant to do, and that when you have that kind of collective punishment, it keeps everyone accountable. Yes, because we all need to be accountable to the world, so that we all know, so the world knows that you know, Adonai is 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 represented through us and our actions. So if we start letting stuff slide and start backsliding and start sitting everywhere, well, then we're reflecting poorly on the honor of the king. So yes. we all need to be accountable. We all need to make sure we have our stuff in order. Because what the what the world sees in us is it should be aspects of, of, of the king. It should be aspects of the covenant that reflect correctly on his honor. And when it doesn't, that's usually when it, it, Israel's punished. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what Yeshua really gave us access to understanding that we're all accountable for our actions. You know, like Jonathan says, many people might not want to celebrate these these feasts because they feel like they're done away with or whatever. But in reality, the feasts are have a individualistic connotation as well that you have to be keeping yourself, you know, holy and, 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 and pure as much as you can so that when the day comes that he is, that he comes, you know, to, to, to earth uh, and to, to to deliver the judgment, that you are worthy of that. It's not like you're gonna be just perfect ever since, you know, he died and resurrected. You are you're called to keep yourself holy as much as you can until he comes back. And I feel like the feasts keep you consciously always aware of okay, you know, Pesach ever since since Pesach you have to start thinking about what you need to work on, what how you need to grow individually and mature. Right, so that way, when you become a father or husband, you're able to take it to the next level and pass it down to to the next generation, and so on and so forth. Because it's not just about you; it's about everyone else that comes after you. That it's is important. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it does actually kind of bring up a good. Sorry, guys, I'm sorry. It, it does actually bring up a good point, and that's something that people will usually don't discuss a lot. That's the idea of culture. Right? It's the idea of having an identity, and even if you don't quite believe in everything or you have questions about the validity of some of these feasts it's good to still celebrate them because it gives you that identity it gives you a purpose it gives you, you, you now you're you know you're doing the same things like shabbat that people have been doing for hundreds of thousands of years and to be part of that community be part of that that you know that culture and so even if you have questions even if you're not a hundred percent sure it's it's good to with some feasts, there's feasts like Passover. You need to be 100 percent sure. Feasts like this, you need to, you need, you still should do them, because it because it gives you that it's it instills in you and your family that sense of identity, that sense of culture. It doesn't let you kind of be this 
weird ethereal thing that doesn't know what you are or who you are. But that's never fun. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's on my, my app. You know, there are some arguments that, you know, people may <clears throat> throw out there um, to defend the reasoning of why not keep the peace, etc. And, and, and why they live the way they live. Um, having faith in Yeshua, but not keeping the Torah. Um, one of them might be, you know, oh, we, you know, there's no temple, you know, there, there's like, you yeah. can't actually fulfill. And, you know, that's a valid point. I'm not telling you that, no, that's not, no, I understand where you're coming from, right? Um, but I want, like, I would bring people to a verse that is usually used against this type of mentality. Uh, and it's, they are shadows of things to come, right? And it's Colossians uh, 2.17. And, you know, people think that maybe, uh, oh, that means they're shadows, so they're not really that important anyway. But our mentality is different because I think that we all are going to agree on what I'm going to say now. And it's that, yeah, they're shadows. But shadow is, is, is an essence that guides you to the essence, to the actual material. Like, uh, there's this image that I saw once of, there's like, um, there's a turn, right? There's a corner and you see a shadow coming in. That's telling you what's that. Oh, there's someone coming and you can look at the shadow and you might even know who that person is. Like, for example, if you guys see me, like I'm pretty big, like I, like I, you're like, oh, that, that's a pretty big shadow. It's Oscar. Oscar. (laughs) It's blotting out the sun. That's gotta be Oscar. Wow. Oh my God. Right. So, so. We're, we're, we're doing it because they lead us to something. They lead us to the con, like the actual like thing that's behind the shadow, that's Messiah, that, who wants to represent Elohim. So it's like, so they're not a bad thing. Yeah, we can't fully fulfill them, but if we do them because we want to remember that, 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 they're, that they're, uh, they are assigned to Messiah. And, and it's also a, a practice, right? Because specifically these Feasts that we're celebrating now, right? Because a, a lot of people will say, "Oh, you know, you have you have Passover, but that's kind of you know, that already kind of happened with yeah. Yeshua." And it's like, "Yeah, touche." That you know, yeah. But these feasts that we're going into now are represent, representative of something that hasn't necessarily happened in our life or in this physical realm that we have now, right? Because people uh, uh, look at the at the Feast of Trumpets as an awakening or a moment of calling into action and oh that's the coming of messiah because the coming is like everyone's suddenly waking up yeah the sounding of because because yom Teruah is literally the day of trumpets the day where trumpets are being sound off and when you think of that you're like that's a moment of, oh they're, they're calling my attention they're telling me that, that something's coming and then you look at the next two feasts it's oh it's a day of judgment or a day of atonement it's a day where judgment is cast and then you have the feast of Sukkot, which is a celebration of or, or victory or or wedding as many people compare it to is that okay so you so you suddenly have these things that are even like they're to come and and and, and we use them as preparations for it. it's like oh i want to prepare myself because you you know yeshua says that no one knows the hour nor the day you know and, and true we, we will never know because only the father knows he says not angels not nobody, not even the son, only the father knows. And these things, these feasts that point to things that are to come, they are preparation for them. So when we're keeping them, we're like, yeah, because we know that this day is coming and we want to practice it. We want to prepare for the day where the, the, the sky opens and we see the, the son of, of Elohim coming down to heaven, from heaven to earth and be like, yo, guys, I'm about to rain. I'm the new king, and we're like, oh, yeah. But it, but we're preparing ourselves because of this. Yeah, yeah. And this reminds us that that is coming. Uh, kind of what Rico was saying. It's part of our culture to remember these things. To, to uh, it helps us assimilate ourselves to the kingdom that is to come. Right. You know, we're exactly. already assimilating something that is isn't here necessarily now, but it's definitely coming. And we do this to prepare for that, for sure. Yeah, I mean, they have, like you said, they haven't been fulfilled, so there's still, you know, things to come from these feasts. That's what we look forward to. Yeah. 
Um, I was reading, it was interesting because I was reading uh, Joseph's good uh, book of uh, Rosh Hashanah, where he's talking about um, the, the meaning of Rosh Hashanah and the feast and how it connects to uh, Messiah. And it's interesting that uh, from obviously our, our the purpose of, of everything is that we go back to what it, what it was in the beginning with you know Adam and, and, and the garden and perfection and so um, he explains that Yeshua right in Yeshua's time the, the, there was an understanding that uh, there was going to be two messiahs right the suffering right uh, suffering servant suffering if I'm not servant. mistaken yeah and then the the king. That was going to bring justice and establish the, the kingdom. Yeah. And so the, the dilemma was obviously that they didn't know who was going to come first or who was the one that was going to appear first. But in scripture, when 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 you uh, when you're studying the the prophecies, it is understood that he will come with a suffering servant uh, first to fulfill a certain rule. Yeah. Right. And so he explains that the word for. Um, gospel right that would they you know everybody says oh preach the gospel preach the gospel and in in hebrew is is basar which is the which says good news or for them it was understood that the 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 good news was that the kingdom that was already with adam mm -hmm. in perfection was to come again to be, be reestablished and so if you're gonna if we were gonna teach the good news it was based on that principle of what was established already by, you know, by God. And so it was interesting that he quotes, and I'm, a, I'm probably going to get out from the screen, but I'm a reader from Luke. He said, he quotes that uh, Yeshua, after he comes into the, to Jerusalem uh, on a donkey, right? He, his, his, his entrance, he says the following. He says, uh, as he drew near, is Luke 19, verse 41, that as he drew near, he saw Jerusalem, and he wept over her, saying, If only you had recognized these days the things that led to shalom, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will surround you with barricades, hang you in all sides, and they will smash you to the ground, you and your children with you, and they won't leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of visitation. And so, now obviously he's speaking about the the first coming he had, right, with Pesach and, you know, his, his resurrection and, you know, first fruits and him fulfilling all, all those feasts, but they were not paying attention to his visitation or how he was going to come because they were so focused on themselves or what they thought was correct and so right there it gives it giving us a, a an understanding a hint that we should not give him another time of of, of sadness or weep or saying that when he comes next time right whether it be this year because we st still have time for him to come or after this year that we're prepared we're ready to receive him that he doesn't come and have to judge all of us because we decided to not keep the feast or not be prepared when he already gave us a hint of, of the things to come. Yep. It's also, if I can add to that, it's also important to understand the context of when Yeshua first came and why the people and why the Pharisees, and the Pharisees in, in particular, and why, why they reacted the way they did and why they expected one Yeshua of the other. And that was because they were being persecuted by the Romans. It was under Roman occupation. They felt they felt persecuted. They felt uh, they felt threatened. They felt like they were they, they they felt their way of life was being extinguished. They felt like they were going to be folded into into Roman into in the Roman culture, and they'd lose their identity and they'd lose everything. That's that's what they felt like. So that's why they expected the, the kingly Yeshua to come in and kill the Romans, to expel the Romans out, and let let them return to glory. So it's important to understand the context of when he, when Yeshua first came in and said those words. It's important to understand why they had the reaction they did, and where where they were in terms of the context. That way, you, that way everyone knows. And it's important for us to have the same kind of feeling too, because we can't let the outside world dictate 
how we see certain things or how we believe certain things. We have to see the text for what it is. We have to take the facts for how they are. And we can't let our own wants, our own desires kind of color that. And that's really important. That's why the feasts are also important because it gives us an idea of when to expect Yeshua. You see a lot of posts everywhere like this guy saying, you know, oh, May 24th, Jesus is going to come back. We just got to wait in the field for him to come back. And then, you know, <laughs> the the whole, field. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was in San Antonio, I remember when I was in middle school, there was this guy that was preaching, some, something about Campbell, I think that was his name, but he was saying that Jesus was going to come back uh, on a certain day, and everybody was waiting outside, and lo and behold, nobody came. Wow. But, so embarrassing. but that's why the feasts are important, because yeah, they give you, it is embarrassing, but yeah. it gives, the feasts give you an idea, like, look, he's going to come on this it's day. A yeah, it's exactly. a roadmap. It's, it's a roadmap. Yeah. And I know so, your dad, uh, he posted a video yesterday, and he was showing, like, how Yom Teruah has a lot of connections to, like, the days of Noah, and um, I forgot, it was something else. But it has, has a lot of... It's out there for people that want to see it. Yeah, it's out there. Uh, it's, it's out there. Uh, I think it's on Facebook, right? You put it on Facebook? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. And Wisdom and Torah, too. And Wisdom and Torah, too. Oh, yeah. Two places, there you go. But uh, it was and a good video. Here. Maybe YouTube. Probably not YouTube. Maybe. So. Maybe, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Twitter. I don't know. It might be on Tumblr. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Someone check 4chan. I don't know if it's going to be on there too. But, uh, like, paraphrasing what your dad was saying, it was a good video because it was showing, like, how Yom Teru is more about, like he said, an, a day of appointment. It's not really more of a feast, but an appointed time for us to come and recognize that soon Yom Kippur is coming. And prophetically, what that means is that, you know, the day that Yom, Yom Teruah, the chauffeurs are blasted and things like that, that is the announcement of, you know, the Yeshua is coming, you know, and that he's going to be enthroned as king. So that's what Yom Teruah is. Uh, and that, that's why it's so important for us, even today, uh, even though you might think that it's done away with and the temple's gone and things like that, it still has a big uh, importance for anybody, not just uh, Jewish people or Messianics and Christians, Everybody that, uh, you know, believes in Yeshua, you know, it's a very big deal. It's not just for one group of people. Exactly. Just as this is the dawn of a new year for us, it'll be the dawn of a new age then. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I, and I thought it was cool. And I, we, we should find that, that, um, that chapter in Genesis that you were talking about Noah. Because he, he makes a, a good connection with, um, with Yeshua as well. Because he said he, it shows that. Uh, when when the flood first started, it was I think uh, Nisan, which is you know Pesach in a way. Yeah, because just just and for then, people that are listening, when you read the Bible, it tells you uh, what it, uh, the seventh month or something like that. It says the, fir yeah. the, the first the first the month? first month. The it, first it month. makes so, but, it, it makes more sense if you're a farmer and if you go by that calendar of agriculture, it makes a lot more sense. But for us, normal yeah. people, it makes zero sense. It's just words. Yeah, because it just says uh, the first month of the year, but like for us, we're thinking yeah. like January when it's it's not. Yeah. Yeah. We're thinking like the, the Roman year. Now, this is the Roman. Yeah. Year. This is like this is like the cycle of agriculture. Yeah, yeah, like the biblical biblical calendar, right? The first the biblical calendar, the first month is Nisan, and then the yeah. civil calendar, as Rico explained, is Tishri. That's yeah. more for the agricultural side. But he explained that in Nisan. That's when basically the flood started, and he and he was in in the ark, and then by uh, <clears throat> Tishri, which is now, is when he comes out of the ark, and then he I think he he, he does the uh, plants the tree, the altar, and it's similar uh, steps that Yeshua will take, being enthroned, establishing the God, the kingdom of Elohim, but the land will be wiped out from. It's it's a uh, the land will be judged just like in the flood, and then the kingdom of God will be established on earth. But it was cool because I remember like your dad and I think it was also Joseph Good that he was pointing out that when you look at those dates because it gives you the month and I think it gives you the day, if I'm not mistaken. But when you look at that, it's actually like those are feast days. But you wouldn't know mm -hmm. unless you followed the calendar. But, you know, since we're exactly. here today, we don't they're have all, that calendar. Yeah, they're, all, they're all tied and bound to a certain structure that was already preordained. And yeah. if, if God established these holidays and these feasts for, for a particular purpose and reason at these certain times of year, and if you're going to agree that God doesn't change, so then therefore you know exactly what he's going to do because he doesn't change and he already established these things. But that shows you that the Bible expects you to know about the feasts. 
It other, does. Otherwise, it expects, yeah. It expects you to be like a farmer back in the first century. That is, that's what it expects you to be because that's when it was written. So if you're not that, you need you need to do some homework to catch up. Yeah, that's um, a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if I can add one thing. Uh, it's the feasts in Hebrew, correct me if I'm wrong, no, they're not named necessarily feasts. They're named Mo- Moedim, correct? Yes. But Moedim is, is, is a word with multiple meanings, right? Moedim also means seasons. It also means time in Hebrew. And it's like, yeah, we're never going to know to, to, uh, to add to what you guys are saying. We're never going to know exactly which day it is. But we definitely know the seasons. We definitely know what area of time it can be in. So, like Rico is saying, you know, God is a, is a unchanging, unwavering, mm-hmm. and He suddenly gives you these times that are, yeah, preordained. Yeah, He's said He's telling you from the beginning, hey, these are my seasons, these are my times, and then later He's like, hey, make sure you keep these seasons and these times. It's for a reason. Yeah. And yeah, we don't know what year, but we definitely know which season it will be happening in, in terms of, you know, yeah. feasts. That way you don't get caught up in a Ponzi scheme, man. <laughs> it might be today. <laughs> a spiritual Ponzi scheme in, in, a, in a field. <laughs> in a field waiting. <laughs> the field. Staring up, eyes wide open at the sun and mouth open. But it's <laughs> What year was it that they said the world was in? Like 2012? 2012. 2012. There you go. Bro, thing. They They're have, off for eight years. This is a was, terrible year. I was not in tour. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, it's a very terrible year. Like, <laughs> I believe that the world was going to end the next year. The next day, I was like, guys, if I don't see you next, uh, tomorrow. Let it, let it be known on this recorded podcast for all eternity. That if I didn't get married, my little wife, Eva, this would have been the worst <laughs> year ever. <laughs> That's like the biggest bright spot of the year. That, let it, yeah, let it that be I'm not sick, thank God, for that. What? Let it be known here. That I am not married this year. Hence, it is the worst year. <laughs> <laughs> it has been marked worst year. There we go. Sorry, oh, yeah. buddy. but I, I'm, I'm gonna He's cut the video. Out. I'm gonna cut the video short because I didn't want to do a long video. I just want to do like yeah. a special video for Yom Teruah, uh, and then next week we'll talk about what we're talking about last week, the two houses, and why it was significant for Yeshua to come back. All right. You heard it first, guys. Two-hour podcast mm-hmm. next week. Two hours minimum. Two hours minimum. Minimum. <sighs> Minimum hour, minimum two hours. We're gonna be into four and twenty. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Happy Yom Teruah.